Hey, I'm Aki Ramon, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gromit here from Loudwire. This is Marky Ramon. Hi. And this is the book, <laughs> Punk Rock Blitzkrieg, My Life as a Ramon. Just an awesome, awesome book. I read this thing cover to cover over the weekend. Uh, again, awesome accomplishment. Thank you. I talked to you a little while ago about this book, and I was asking, you know, with all the biographies, documentaries, all that stuff that's out there, like a seemingly endless amount of information about the Ramones, what was this going to bring? And your answer to me was the truth. Well, I wanted to... You better it. find that funny. That's part of it. Well, I wanted to... to uh, I read, again, I read all the books. Uh, I even made a documentary about the Ramones called Raw, which was our bi biggest selling DVD from my own uh, Ramones video library. But the thing is that uh, most of the books were, were exaggerated. There were a lot of things that I read in them. Obviously, uh, they're designed to sell books, so, sure. which is what we call sensationalism. And a lot of it was exaggerated and false. I said, look, I got to write the real thing. You know, there's a lot of Ramones fans who are cur cur curious to see what a Ramon would write about. So uh, that's what uh, uh, inspired me to do this book. So, you know, think of Phil Speck, the film in Rock and Roll High School, uh, what happened back uh, at the backstage at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, what it was like doing The Simpsons, the, the beginning of the CBGB's era, the punk scene, all, all that other stuff. All this is in there, and uh, it's the real story. Yeah, I mean, speaking of high school, you talk all about your high school experiences. Well, <laughs> yes. Some, some pretty uh, intense stories from there, a lot of confrontations with teachers and such. Different times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. in, in those days, teachers didn't think twice of smacking you around. Or, 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 you know, giving you hard noogies in the head and, uh, you know, uh, pushing you in the chest. Uh, I had a lot of confrontations like that because of how I dressed, who I was, and all the stuff and the music I liked. And I really didn't pay attention in school. I guess they call it, well, they do call it now attention deficit disorder. And that's what I probably had. I couldn't sit still. I was very hyper. I would melt crayons on radiators. <laughs> I would uh, throw spitballs at the teachers. Yes. Uh, I, in order to, to complete a year in, in high school, I, would, I wouldn't even go for the 10 months. I would just go to night school and summer school in the summer. So, so I completed three years of high school in six months. Wow. I feel so ripped off. You know I, I mean? had to do the whole thing. Yeah. It's bullshit. Just, just barely pass, and <laughs> eventually I got my general diploma on the wall, and that's what my parents wanted. And that's one of the reasons why uh, my first band had to break up, because I was a poor student. Oh, okay. Which, t which taught me nothing. <laughs> uh, well, you know, obviously there's a happy ending to that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. There, well, there was, no, there was no major drum... Uh, lesson uh, class or anything like that but the, the teacher the music te teacher was cool so was the English teacher and that was about it yeah and I mean uh, you also paint a really good picture of what New York City was like oh, yeah. in the 60s and the 70s I mean uh, the the grunge of it really the dirt yeah. you know there's a part in the book where you got stabbed by someone yeah, yeah. like yeah I was walking out of Max's Kansas City, which was uh, basically the uh, competition to CBGB's. Yeah. It was a, a, a very nice club. Everybody went there. Uh, I was coming out of the club, and there were two guys fighting. And me, being the good Samaritan, came in between them, not knowing what the fight was about. And this poor little guy was being uh, slapped around, punched around by this tall, big guy. So I figured, let me help the little guy. I get in between them, and it's the little guy that stabbed me. <laughs> so here I am. What the hell's going on here? So he, oh. he got me under the arm, and then I had to go to the hospital and get cauterized. And, and it's funny, the police, one of the police officers in the car goes, don't bleed in the back seat. 
put your finger in your wound. <laughs> right. I remember reading that. So uh, I had to listen. In the book, uh, you also dis- you also discuss your own problems with uh, with alcohol and stuff like that. I mean, there was a a part where you crashed your car through a furniture store window. Um, when you were detoxing, you're having these crazy hallucinations and stuff like that. Um, if you could identify it, what do you think your rock bottom was? The second time I had to go away to, uh, to uh, the, the rehab, the second time, not the first time. The um, place was not a country home. It wasn't a country club like the first one. It was like a barracks wow. where, where you had to sleep on, on cots. That's right. You had to, you had to uh, mop the floors, clean the walls, clean the toilets. Whatever, whatever, whatever the psychiatrist there or the person appointed to take care of everybody told you to do just so you could stay sober, you had to do it. So that I never wanted to go back to. So when I got out of there, that's when I learned, hey, you know, I'd rather be doing this than that. Yeah. You know, so that, that, that impressed upon me uh, a whole lot. And going through the furniture store window didn't help either. <laughs> I was driving, it was a hot day out, I saw a bar. And it was uh, on Atlantic, off Atlantic and near Flatbush. I parked, found a, a nice spot, and uh, I had, uh, I think, six Newcastle Browns, which is an English ale. Very good, very effective. I'm a fan. I am very, very love my Newcastle Browns. Very ale. effective. <laughs> and then I had some, uh, I think it was martinis, a 151, straight up, uh, Ron McCarty rum. Then I got back into the car. Again, it's hot summer. It's, you know, too hot. I, dr- I was driving and I, f- I blacked out at the wheel. Instead of my foot going on, onto the uh, brake, it stayed on the accelerator and shh. So luckily I didn't kill myself or kill anybody. And uh, Very. You know, I got mug shot, fingerprints, and, you know, somebody, some uh, parents said I ran over his daughter's foot, which I didn't. He just wanted to make a quick insurance buck. So, uh, well, see what happens when you drink <laughs> in excess. So, you write a uh, book. <laughs> so you can read all about it in here and how to get sober. Yeah. But the DTs are the worst. Oh, God. You're, you're standing in, anywhere in front of a window, looking out the window. A form starts start shaping. And you don't know what it is until it comes together, because it's your brain. It's not just going to have a, uh, uh, the uh, figure already there. It's, it starts taking shape. And you're, and you're trying to wipe your eyes. You know you're trying to stop drinking on your own, which you really can't, because it's, you need help. And there it is, the dinosaur. <laughs> Literally. You, you turn away, and it's closer. And then you run out of the house. Then you go back to your house, go under the covers. You're not. Eating, you're under your covers. So all you see is flying insects, uh, uh, the worst kind of scary creatures you can imagine on like another planet. So, you know, it's it's though those were indicators of eventually what would happen if I didn't stop. In your opinion, with this book, uh, what do you think the overall thought or message or point do you want people to get? Oh, that it was a great ride, a lot of fun, a lot of ups and downs like life throws at us. Uh, it's going to happen, that's life. Uh, it could happen to anybody, it happens to a lot of people in any kind of business. And uh, believe in yourself and, uh, you know, rehearse a lot and uh, try to be original and uh, uh, follow your dreams and don't let these these temptations get in the way you know because those temptations can definitely ruin it for you if you if you're not careful 